The following is a paid advertisement of St. Anthony Hospital Orthopedics. References to any specific product, services, or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by St. Anthony Hospital, Carroll Broadcasting, or its advertisers. The views expressed by the host or guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Welcome to the St. Anthony Hospital Orthopedic Show with Dr. Richard Godding. Dr. Godding specializes in joint preservation, reconstruction, and replacement surgery, and brings over 25 years of orthopedic excellence to St. Anthony Hospital and to the Carroll area. For more information about Dr. Godding, his practice, or St. Anthony Orthopedics, go to stanthonyhospital.org or make an appointment by calling 712-794-5536. Good Sunday morning, Iowa. It's Dr. Rick Godding. Thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me here this morning. So last weekend was the first weekend that we haven't traveled. Now, of course, I always have to remind people, I record this on Monday. That's just where my schedule is right now. So I'm I'm recording... Monday the 22nd here. So when I say last weekend, I mean the weekend of the Saturday the 20th. It was the first time we hadn't traveled for sports or had a track meet or a volleyball meet or anything like that for a long time. So my wife and I went to, there's a jazz club in uh, in Des Moines and it's called Noche, N-O-C-E. And we just, we went out to dinner and we went to this nice little place in Des Moines, called H-O-Q, I think they call it Hawk, but it's farm to table, really, really good food. Of course, I only had meat. I did not even eat the amazing looking onion ring with a special sauce that they put in front of me, and I didn't eat any of the uh, pierogies that my wife ordered for an appetizer. I just ate meat, and it was good. Anyway, so we were trying to decide what to do afterwards, and said, well, let's see some music, and we saw online this thing that at Noche that night they had this guy from Des Moines and I can't remember his name I feel bad but anyway he went to Drake University and was an arts degree kind of guy and a singer and producer and he was doing an evening of Stevie Wonder and Luther Vandross so we went to that and it was really neat because you know it's a small place and it's very intimate and it was just nice to see Des Moines having something like that, like a homegrown guy who's to, they did a very good job. It was a very enjoyable evening. If you're ever looking to do something on that level, Noche is kind of a cool little place. We did look around and realize that we are old because everybody in there <laughs> was our age or older. And we <laughs> were like, Oh man, what are all these old people doing here? Like, Oh yeah, here we are. Cause you know, I'm 54. My wife's 53. So, oh, I'm sorry. She's 26 again, but it was a nice little time. So I didn't have any big sports obligations. My oldest daughter, Sydney is going through lifeguard training and she had some friends over and I made spaghetti for them and I only ate the meatballs with no sauce. And then my youngest daughter, Madison, she's doing track and volleyball, but she didn't have anything this weekend. So it was a very relaxing weekend. Uh, we had gone to Louisville the weekend before, as I mentioned, and that was, uh, yeah, just a really big, big event and a fun time. And we had a, we had a great time. We are ready for the travel season to end in volleyball. It's, it's kind of fun going, you know, we went to Omaha, my wife went to Kansas city. I went to Louisville. Um, we went to Cedar Lou. They call it Cedarloo. <laughs> well, you and I had that tournament, so we, you know it was it was an extensive amount of driving and uh, and sleeping in hotels, but it was fun and the girls had a good time and uh, hopefully they learned learned something about themselves doing these sports. So the the onion continues to peel away, and I continue. The more I dig, the more I find that this metabolic approach to orthopedics is it's there it's like there's an undercurrent of it and there's studies that 
have shown all of these things and it's never something it's not like when you go to a conference or you read the journals, this stuff is not front and center. And I understand because it's still, there's not enough of a huge body of evidence to make recommendations for treatments in this area of metabolic orthopedics. However, there's enough for me to say, you know, there's, there's, there's enough evidence here for me to recommend probiotics and essential amino acids for my patients. And so here's a study I came across uh, over the weekend, and it's all the way back from 2014. And I'm going to read a little bit of it to you so that you can kind of get the gist of it. And I'll translate anything that's in Latin. (laughs) Few studies in animals and a study in humans showed a positive effect of probiotics on bone metabolism and bone mass density. We're talking about osteoporosis here. Let's give some definition of terms. Osteoporosis is where your your bones get thin and brittle, and you fall and you get your hip fracture or your wrist fracture. Osteoarthritis is the breakdown of the joint, and that doesn't have anything to really do with a fall, although... Later on, if you fall, then you can develop arthritis later. But osteoarthritis is a breakdown of the joint, and that's what we treat with injections and joint replacements. So most of the investigated bacteria were lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. We keep coming back to these, lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. It's every study I read, it's those same two. So that's why I recommend I take myself the uh, Garden of Life formulation of probiotics and it's available at Walmart and Whole Foods and they have lots of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and it's made in America. The positive results of the probiotics were supported by a high content of dietary calcium and high amounts of supplemented probiotics. So these, you know, doctors have long recommended for postmenopausal women and even premenopausal women to make sure that there's enough calcium either in your diet or as a supplement. We don't really know what that number is. used to be a certain number of international units, and now it's just, I think, it's a nebulous number, but it's not a bad thing to take some extra calcium if you're a woman uh, because women tend to have more osteoporosis than men, and it just has to do with hormonal science and, and how the hormones affect the metabolism of nutrients. Anyway, the positive results of the probiotics were supported by high content of dietary calcium and the high amounts of supplemented probiotics. Some of the principal mechanisms include increasing mineral solubility due to production of short-chain fatty acids. In other words, by taking the probiotics, the bacteria make minerals like calcium more soluble, meaning they're able to be dissolved in water and then absorbed in, through the int- intestines. Producing phytase enzyme by bacteria to overcome the effect of mineral depressed by phytate. That's more complex. Let's just say that it is it is an enzyme that the bacteria put out that, in, again, in, increases the uptake of minerals. Reducing intestinal inflammation followed by increasing bone mass and density. So when you're in a what's called a dysbiotic state, a dysbiotic state in your gut means that the normal bacterial profile is disrupted. And the normal bacterial profile, now it isn't exactly the same in everybody. There are dozens, if hundreds of bacteria that are in your gut. Hundreds of different types. There's billions of them with a B. And they change. There's different ones in your mouth, in your throat, in your stomach, in your small intestine, in your large intestine. But when they're out of balance, it's called dysbiosis. And so what they're saying here is the dysbiosis causes inflammation in the gut because these bacteria that are normally sort of laying in the background have kind of taken over, and some of them can be a little harsher type of bacteria. So by taking the probiotics, you reduce the inflammation in your gut and you, again, increase your bone mass density. And so the thing I really just wanted to to say, and here's their conclusion, 
The results also showed that postmenopausal women who suffered from low bone mass density are potential targets to consume probiotics for increasing mineral bioavailability, including calcium and consequently increasing bone mass density. So what's happening is by having the appropriate bacterial balance in your gut, your gut, your intestines are able to absorb dietary calcium at a better rate and magnesium and phosphate and thus give you a higher bone mass density. In other words, probiotics, there's evidence now that probiotics have the potential to be shown to reduce osteoporosis and therefore could potentially reduce the number of fractures that happen. Now, there's a lot of research on this. Some of it is more direct than others and it would take a very long time to do the research properly where you, so let's say you wanted to prove, let's say I'm I'm out to prove that taking probiotics on a population level, meaning that broadly people being given probiotics is going to reduce the number of fractures in that population. In order to do that, study appropriately from a scientific perspective, you would have to get a large number of people. You would have to prescribe randomly half of them probiotics and tell the other ones don't take probiotics. Okay. And then you would have to follow them for years and years and years probably 20 years. I mean, it's, it's essentially an impossible study to do. That is to show, to say directly that this taking the probiotics improves your bone density in the long term and will reduce fractures. What we can say, though, is there's a lot of evidence pointing in that direction. There is also evidence that probiotics are involved in osteoarthritis. Now, osteoarthritis, again, is the breakdown at the joint. So the joint should be smooth and it gets sort of broken up like potholes in a gravel road. And this is something that we don't really understand exactly why some people get it and some people don't even after even after an injury there's some people that will have an injury and then develop osteoarthritis and some people that won't and the new there's some new research suggesting that bacterial dysbiosis again where you have an overgrowth of the bacteria that you don't really want in the gut that are that are there in the background but they overgrow that they release these things called lipopolysaccharides don't need to know what that is but just know that there's a word out there and that they then flow through the circulation and when they come into the knee they have inflammatory mediators meaning they have molecules on them that increase inflammation in the knee and that inflammation then drives osteoarthritis. So you now have a a fair amount of evidence that osteoarthritis can improve your osteoporosis or reduce the rate at which you get osteoporosis. And the same thing with osteoarthritis, that by taking probiotics, and this is going to be a long-term game, ladies and gentlemen, this is not you take probiotics for a month and all of a sudden your (laughs) arthritis gets better. This is, you want to get yourself as metabolically healthy as you can, get your weight where it's supposed to be through diet and exercise, and then you take your probiotics like you would take any other vitamin or supplement. You take it every day, you take it for years, and you trust that it's probably going to have an effect. Now, probiotics and a good gut balance have been shown to do all kinds of things, I'm driving to work this morning and I do my search. I I search every week or so just to see what's new. And there is an outfit up in Canada called the Lawson Health Research Institute. Oh, I'm sorry, London. It's in London. 
anyway, I'm not sure if it's in London or it's in Canada, doing research right now on they're going to give people probiotics before they have a knee replacement. But I'm, I'm reading this article, and they have contributors from England and contributors from Canada, and it's a .ca address. So usually that's in Canada, but... What they're doing is they are giving, they're taking some patients, and because of everything in the literature that they've read, they think a good question to answer is, if we give patients probiotics at the time of their knee replacement surgery and for the six weeks after, are we going to actually see a difference in the ingrowth of bone into the implant? Because the bone actually grows into the implant or into the cement, depending on what kind of an implant you use. So they think it's worth spending $250,000 on to show in a study where they're going to take CT scans, CAT scans of the metal at intervals after the surgery and see if the probiotics help grow in the bone. And I think that's just amazing. And so what that tells you, again, is even if it doesn't, you're losing nothing by being on probiotics. And I think everybody should probably be on probiotics. The American diet is not healthy. We eat tremendous amounts of ultra processed foods and vegetable oils, which are held out. You know, they, <laughs> it's so funny. Is you a bottle of vegetable oil and it actually has vegetables, a picture of vegetables on the front, but there's no vegetables involved in making vegetable oils. They're all seed oils, highly processed industrialized oils, which are then treated to take the foul odor and taste out, and then they are bleached and then dyed. So they're not natural at all. Olive oil is is an exception, and coconut oil is an exception, but all the canola and the regular vegetable oil, even the corn oil, it's seed oil that's crushed and processed heavily. The sugar that we eat, the wheat that we're eating now, all the processed foods. The way, you know, you look at the way even chips are made. The food is broken down and reassembled. It's just, anyway, the American diet is terribly unhealthy. What you can do is you can improve your diet and eat less of that stuff and more nutritious things like meat and whole vegetables. And you actually have to pay attention to what vegetables, but that's a different discussion. But you can take probiotics and that can help. And you can take that, I would highly recommend if you're having surgery on any part of your musculoskeletal system. If you're having bowel surgery, I don't, there's a lot of evidence on probiotics and bowel surgery, but I, since you're actually operating on the bowel and the probiotics affect the bowel, I don't give advice on that. I would ask your surgeon on that. If you're having any kind of an orthopedic surgery, it's a reasonable idea to take probiotics first. And I'm sure your orthopedic surgeon is going to have no problem with it. They might just think I'm wacky for talking about it uh, because they haven't read much about it because most orthopedic surgeons haven't, but um, I don't think anybody's going to have a problem with you doing it. The other is the essential amino acids. Again, 9 to 20 grams is what the literature says. You take that around the time of your orthopedic surgery, and it will help your muscle recover from the surgery. And this is, you know, this is all stuff that I'm reading out of the literature. And it's just exciting because, again, like I said, I'm I'm looking for these marginal improvements now because we've got these giant improvements like the robot and these, well, the pain protocol is 20 different marginal improvements, you know, that all coalesce together to make it where we're now only giving 10 oxycodones uh, for a joint replacement. So what's the next frontier? I think the next frontier is metabolic health, looking at the entire body, you know, and I, and I, two or three or four times a day, I have a, 10 to 15 minute talk with one of my patients about losing weight and getting metabolically healthy. And I probably would do it more if I had more time. And luckily I have this struggle so I can say it and people don't take it as accusatory because, you know, I've now lost 37 pounds this year on the carnivore diet. And I I think it maybe makes people relate to me a little bit better when they see, gosh, last time I was here, you looked a lot bigger. What are you doing? So I would encourage all that, but just wanted to really kind of dive a little bit into probiotics today. It's just an amazing uh, new avenue of research for orthopedic surgery, and I'm learning stuff all the time. I didn't know that probiotics could potentially prevent you from from getting osteoporosis or worsening it, 
and osteoarthritis. It's just it's exciting times, exciting times. So with that, I hope that uh, we have a nice sunny weekend weekend coming up, and I hope everybody is out enjoying it and uh, get your exercise, get your vitamin D, eat healthy, be healthy, and have a blessed week, Iowa. This has been the St. Anthony Hospital Orthopedic Show with Dr. Richard Godding. For more information about Dr. Godding, his practice, or St. Anthony Hospital Orthopedics, go to www.stanthonyhospital.org or make an appointment by calling 712-794-5536.